is PlayStation now a bad idea, and will it end up costing Sony? Oh, man. Uh, apparently, I've seen some of the prices. It seems like some of the digital rental prices for PlayStation now are like ripoffs. Um, I think I saw like, you know, like five bucks for a day rental or something like that. Something crazy. But Gary, you know more about this. Fill me in on PlayStation now. Yeah, I don't have all the information in front of me, but I think it was um, it's like two ninety nine for two days, I think, and all, and it's like five uh, five dollars or five ninety nine for like a week, maybe, and um, and one of the one like one of the biggest things that stood out was they had um, Saints Row, um, I believe it's the second game, yeah, the second game, they had Saints Row two. For like uh, twenty nine ninety nine, and you can rent that for 30, thirty days or it's either thirty days or three months. I can't remember which one, but yeah, um, I mean, when you consider that you can probably get that game for dirt cheap anyway, you know, why would you pay that price for a rental for a digital rental on PlayStation now? So well, yeah, I mean, um, yeah, go ahead. Let me ask this: Do you, do we know who sets the prices? Because the Saints Row brand was purchased by I think like Deep Silver or somebody like that. Yeah. Um, and I would definitely expect them to want to make the money back on that IP. Uh, is it Sony setting the price or is it these third party you know companies saying uh, well our game should probably be X amount of dollars for a week. Yeah I mean I'm sure the publishers have a say on the price themselves. Um, I, I think it's between Sony and the publisher. Um, you know both of them uh, must come up with the, with the price together, I guess. But I mean, the the fact is though that if you're gonna have prices like that, you know, I, I don't know how many other games are within that price range, or if all games are the same price, or or I don't know the details like that because I'm not in the beta or anything. But I mean, when you're gonna have prices like that on the platform, um, it kind of defeats the purpose in the first place, you know, of renting the game. When I mean, if you could buy the game for cheaper, and you know they've even given this given away this game on um, PlayStation Plus before and um, other platforms, so you know it's like it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing. Well, let me ask this because I mean we're getting PlayStation now as a means to make up for the lack of backwards compatibility. Correct? Is that a big factor? Is that fair to say? Yeah. Why yeah. then? And this is something I've been thinking about. You look at the premier titles for PlayStation now. They've shown a lot of The Last of Us. It, to me, it feels like it's you're kind of defeating your own purpose when you're hyping specific games like The Last of Us. I think another one they've shown off is God of War Ascension. And yet, you're re-releasing remasters of The Last of Us, yeah. and rumor has it there will be a God of War Ascension PS4 port as well. It's, oh. it's mixed messages um, exactly. Like, I mean, if if I mean, if there wasn't a remaster of The Last of Us, they could have they could have had The Last of Us as like the flagship PlayStation Now title that could have oh, like sold the service, basically. Yes. So, uh, you know, let me just say one thing. You're right about that. You both are right about that. But the logic that they are probably going after is, well, if you want to play Last of Us, it'll be cheaper. If you use PlayStation Now instead of outright buying the game for forty nine ninety nine, um, maybe that's the way that they're going with it. The same mindset. Know. I was gonna say like it's you know the same mindset of oh buy a year of PlayStation Plus now for X amount of dollars or buy a month for ten, uh, you know, yeah. kind of a smaller digest price. Exactly. I mean, my, my thing is, though, like, a lot of people are touchy on the fact that if you stop subscribing to PlayStation Plus, you lose the games that you got on that service. So when it comes to, like, PlayStation Now, like, wouldn't you, wouldn't a lot of people, the majority of people that complain about PlayStation Plus, these are people who would rather own their games, I guess. So, like, with PlayStation Now, it's like, um... Who are you really targeting with this? Because people are already complaining about PlayStation Plus and the fact that you lose all your games if you don't subscribe. Well, all right, so I didn't leave yet because y'all started talking about PlayStation now. <laughs> um, 
two things. First, like the, of course, the prices that they're putting in the beta now are test prices. Uh, to kind of, I think they're doing it to gauge the reaction, see what's acceptable and see what's not. As far as you know, who the target audience is, I have an interesting answer on this. I think it's more, it's going to be targeted at the people that get the like for the future, the people that get the TVs that have PlayStation Now embedded in it. And people that get the little PlayStation TV device. Oh, yeah. yeah, PlayStation TV. That, because, like, you know, we mentioned before, Sony is struggling financially. And part of that is because their other uh, departments are not doing well. Like, they used to be a staple in televisions, but Samsung is murdering them in televisions now. They don't have a shot. This could be the whole PlayStation Now movement, um, and, you know, even all the way back to when they purchased Gaikai, could be. Um, them using one of their stronger departments, the gaming group, to strengthen their other areas. Because having a console or having a television that can stream these games with without a console is going to be big. Now, internet is going to be a problem. They've got to figure it out. I, I don't know if y'all have played PlayStation now. Um, it works really well sometimes. Um, I've done it on games. I've done it with games that really need to be uh, one to one as far as reaction, like driving games, fighting games. And I tried Dead Island. Dead Island Riptide was probably the worst experience I've had uh, with <laughs> PlayStation Now. It was like the laggiest piece of crap. It was terrible. It was it was nearly unplayable. Um, and my internet is probably about average. And they and they have to realize that not everyone is going to have top tier internet speed so there has to be some kind of balance there I, I don't know the ins and outs on how that would work but they've got to find a balance you know Edward was talking earlier about uh, with the Microsoft sharing you know maybe coming back talking about well if the if X game is not one I'd want to buy it's maybe something I'd want to check out uh, that kind of you know I, I don't want to buy it but I wouldn't mind to play it aspect and feature um, I think going forward, I don't know, it's just my, my issue with what PlayStation Now is trying to do is don't we already have that with PlayStation Plus? You have the chance to play games that you necessarily maybe wouldn't want to buy, but you wouldn't mind playing. Um, and at the same time, though, the bigger games they're featuring, like The Last of Us, I would rather kind of buy and get the PS4 version. It's, it's a very weird middle ground approach to things. Yeah, it is. But what also thinking very far ahead, what if this is kind of spearheading a movement where the console is less of a focus in the future, like you know PlayStation Five or whatever, where you the the where the limitations that have hindered consoles today uh, versus PC gamers is a thing of the past because of the streaming capability. I what think is, what if this is them testing that out? No, I, I think it is very much a games as a service approach. Um, my only issue with that is I don't know about you guys, but I'm still very much a retail guy, and uh, oh, I me think, too, by far. Well, I, I think a good chunk of the I think the reason a lot of us play consoles is because we like discs, and I think I, I think it's one of those aspects that if we were more digital friendly, we probably already would have a PC. Um, so, I mean, I, I can see it as being like an interesting testing ground, but I can only speak for myself. I would rather want to buy Uncharted Trilogy remastered on the PS4 at 1080p um, than really kind of rent all three Uncharted's with PlayStation now. Uh, so, I mean, it, no offense to those who enjoy the service, but I don't think it's for me. I think, uh, like Charles said, I guess, I guess if if PlayStation now does catch on, it's probably going to be on the TVs and the PlayStation TV device, I guess, and maybe the Vita. I could, like the Sony. Uh, it, what is is it? The Sony branded TV that's going to start having the service included. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could see it that take off. You know, definitely for that approach, but. I haven't gotten rid of my PS3. I don't think you guys got rid of your PS3. It makes me wonder if that's 
I hate to use the term, but it makes me wonder if something like PlayStation Now is really meant for even more casual players to begin with. Yeah, I think I think so because for me personally, like I I I don't see the appeal of it. I'd be much more comfortable with a, you know, let me pay twenty dollars a month and play all these games as opposed to a specific. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's know. what that's what everyone wanted. But um, I'm sure they I'm sure they'll have an incentive for PlayStation Plus people to do it, like a discounted thing or. PlayStation uh, Plus Plus. Yeah, like another tier or something that gets PlayStation Now included in it. I'm sure there's going to be an incentive to push people towards the PS Plus. But well, yeah. on that note, I really got to go. Peace. Oh, yeah, you got to go. All right. Yeah, so what do the Xbox guys think, Rich, Ed? Well, what I think is um, I think PlayStation Now is a good concept, but I also believe that um, if there were issues such as this price issue, I feel like this issue will ultimately get overlooked because, as you already know, and I'm just going to say it how it is, a lot of times when Sony makes mistakes, a lot of the loyal, loyal, loyal fans, if you want to call them fanboys or whatever, they will be quick to overlook that and say, okay, well, whatever. This goes back to the whole argument about the 1080p where everybody was making a big deal because all the games on PlayStation are 1080p, yet... Watch Dogs is 900p, but I don't hear nobody complain about that. They seem to overlook that fact. So this is related to this because I feel like this news about this being an issue with PlayStation Now, I feel like a lot of people will pretend like they didn't hear about any of this bad news. They're going to be like, well, whatever, whatever. It's not, it's not a big deal, but it is a big deal uh, if they don't do something about it. I'm pretty sure they are going to have some type of incentive to make it cheaper because they already introduced this thing into the fact where they got their power series started where they said that people who have PlayStation Plus will get the first episode free. I don't know if they said the season or episode free, the but they, they'll, they, they're, pre- they're pretty much going to probably do something similar with this. Uh, probably bump up the price on Plus a little bit and offer another option or something like that, but yeah. Um, I would have to agree with Austin. I don't believe that it, the service is for me uh, personally because, shit, I got a PlayStation 4, so I want to play PlayStation 4 games. What the hell I want to go backwards for and play PlayStation 3 games for, especially if they're going to get remade and put on PlayStation 4. It makes no kind of sense. Um, but that's just my opinion. Let's ask Ed, what, he, what does he think? Um, I just think people have been hyping up PlayStation Now so much, and I'm not going to diss it. Um, I'm being serious, genuine here. Um, I think people have been uh, hyping PlayStation Now so much, I guess they believe it's like Netflix for PlayStation games, but I think if anything, PlayStation Now is just like, it's it's basically Redbox on your, on your console. I'd say that'd be a, a pretty appropriate comparison. I don't, I don't think they're, I think they're, if anything, they're just, com- uh, you know, Pricing themselves competitively against Redbox, if anything else, um, you know, and that's what you're gonna get out of PlayStation now. That's what I believe, at least. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, there, is, there are there are strategies that they're taking with it, though. You know, putting it on, like Charles mentioned again. You know, the, uh, putting it on their televisions and the PlayStation TV device. I mean, come to think of it, that's a good idea. But I mean, I mean, the PlayStation TV device, first of all, um, that's a very casual device. I don't see, I don't think that's going to sell a lot, to be honest. Um, I don't know. I just don't know how they're going to market it over here. I mean, I I can see why it would sell in Japan, but I don't know how they're going to market it over here because casual people, I don't even think they're going to be clued up enough on it to buy it in the first place. But the TV thing, that could be good. I guess. And the well, I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine a scenario with respect to the guy I talked to about, you know, uh, PlayStation TV. I mean, I've seen it. There's very little lag. He was playing in from the second sun. Uh, but I'm trying to think of a scenario where, to me, the most attractive thing about PlayStation TV is the ability to stream your PS4 to another TV. Um, I'm trying to think of when that situation might arise, though. Uh, I know 
I don't know if you guys saw the commercial for it or the you know the video for PlayStation TV or Vita TV or whatever it's been called. Um, nobody's gonna force me out of that room when I'm trying to play my PS4. Uh, it's uh, I mean I, I don't know when that feature is gonna be really at its most attractive. I have a Vita, um, so I would rather buy Vita games for my Vita. More so, they've stopped supporting the Vita, so what kind of selling point is it to say, oh, it plays Vita games, by the way? Um, it would have been great if this had launched along with the Vita. Uh, we would have you know, found a way to support one platform really two different ways, but I'm just not seeing the allure right now for the Vita TV or PlayStation. You, know, you guys know, whatever the exact title is. Yeah, I think in the U.S. it's called PlayStation TV. And PlayStation TV? Yeah, in Japan it's Via TV. That's it. And yeah, like it works great in Japan. Um, they typically have smaller, you know, kind of living areas, so you're obviously not going to have a big black bulky box. Uh, but, you know, the West loves its big screen TVs. It loves its consoles and its DVR players in the same room, and I just can't see a situation where PlayStation TV is going to change the arrangement of the house. 